Hi everyone, welcome to Granary Online. It's great to have you with us today, wherever you may be. When we start with worship, the whole idea is to just center our hearts and our minds on incredible love of God for us. So as we enter into a time of worship now, just settle back and forget everything else and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and allow God to minister his love to you. Let's worship. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body
Last week, last Saturday, there was a fundraiser for Ukraine refugees run by the women of the Granary. And the good news is that we have currently raised more than $5,000 towards that, towards helping Ukrainian refugees settle in Australia. Our aim as a church is that any refugees that we meet or have an opportunity to serve, we want them to feel loved, embraced and welcomed into our country. We want to find a, help them find a safe place where they can be healed from the trauma of what they've been through. And so this generosity is, is really just one step towards that. And it's not too late for you to give to that. If you'd like to give to that, just, um, just transfer the money and just say it's for the Ukrainian fundraiser. And that is going to bless so, so many people. And it's our privilege to be able to do this as um, followers of Jesus who want to show his extraordinary, generous love to other people. Today, we're going to hear from Jake Divins. Jake is our youth pastor. He's doing such an amazing job with our youth. And if you've got teenage kids, I'm sure they will tell you some of the incredible things that are happening. And we're talking about prayer. And yes, sometimes when people hear prayer, you just think of a list of asking God for things or something like that. But today, I just really hope and pray that our vision of what this is is expanded because really prayer is this incredible um, privilege that we have by the Holy Spirit to be able to be in communion with God all the time, to be able to talk to him, hear him, befriend him, know him, be loved by him and to love him. And it's really a life-changing experience. So today, um, may we all have a profound, great understanding of what it means to be able to commune with the God who created the universe, who created you, and has an amazing plan for your life. But let's have a look at what's on at the Granary. Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is What's On at the Granary. River Cafe is now hiring for a cafe manager. If you have a heart for ministry and have experience in the hospitality industry, we'd love to hear from you. Check out the jobs page on the Granary website or for more information and to apply. Freshwater Ministries will be running a six week prophetic foundations course at our Maitland campus starting this Thursday, the 7th of July. Places are limited and registration is essential. So please check out the events page on our website so that you don't miss out on this great opportunity. We are getting so close to opening our new premises for the Granary Care Ministry Centre. The transformation has been amazing and is a testament to both our wonderful volunteers and the incredible faithfulness of God. If you've been looking at how you can be involved, we have a working bee coming up next Saturday, the 9th of July. To register your interest, please contact the church office. Our VIP's July event will be held on Wednesday, the 27th of July. This month, our guest speaker will be our very own Dr. Lisa Burgess. These mornings are a great time for fellowship and I hear they prepare an amazing morning tea. For more information, contact our VIP's pastor, Sam Pilly. We're currently looking for more Sunday volunteers for the River Cafe. If you have hospitality, customer service or retail experience, or are just really great with people and love coffee, we wanna hear from you. Register your interest through the website or flick an email through to hello at granary.org.au. Well, that's all for what's on this week. For more information or to register for any events, check out the church website, church app, or see the team at the info desk after the service. Bye. <laughs> So we've just begun our new financial year. And as you heard from Theo last week, we are currently looking for 200 seeds of $30 a week. And what we mean is um, we'd like people to consider their giving to the church as we move into this new year with the fresh vision that we have for this new financial year. And perhaps you, you already give. And so um, the question is, would you consider increasing your giving by $30 a week or by whatever it works for you? Or perhaps you've never started giving and would you consider planting a seed of $30 a week or more if you would like? And our aim is that by the end of this final, well, the end of the financial year we've just finished, that we would be ready to launch into this new year with um, fresh new vision to reach many people with the love of God and that we all contribute into this vision. Ways of giving are coming up on the screen and I encourage you to, to look at this and to ask the Holy Spirit as you pray as to what 
he would like you to give because when you give you're really partnering with him in the work that is happening in this region and wherever this may go so let's pray for our giving and ourselves father we thank you for the privilege of knowing your love for being loved by you for being transformed into your likeness and the privilege of serving you in this world and we pray today that as we give, that everything that we give will be multiplied just as the loaves and the fishes were with the feeding of the 5,000. And may you do greater things with our gifts than we could even begin to imagine. And thank you for the privilege of serving with you and serving with one another in this community. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's hear from Jake. Hello everyone and welcome to the Granary Church Online. It's really good to be here with you today. Been a while since I've done an online recording, so it's good to have the lights back in the face and the camera in front of me. I'm quite excited about what we're going to be discussing today. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And it's a well-known passage that we've probably all heard, quoted, or read countless times in our lives. It's the Lord's Prayer. So what I want to do today is essentially just read it and ask God to show us his view, help us see it through his lens, because often I think a passage like this is so packed, full of goodness, but because of how regularly it's used and it can, can be seen as a very liturgical prayer, um, I think we can lose some of the meat, some of the good stuff that's here. So we're just going to read it verse by verse explore it a bit and expect God to show us who he is and what he's like through it. So I'm going to pray. Jesus, thank you that we get to explore what you said about prayer and what you taught about prayer. Help us to learn it well, but also Jesus, help us to understand your heart. Help us to be more like you in Jesus name. Amen. Matthew chapter six, five through 15 says this, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in synagogues and at street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So this passage came about, the reason Jesus was actually speaking these words, a couple of verses before his disciples asked him, after watching him pray for thousands to be fed, after watching him pray for people to be healed, they said to him, teach us to pray. We wanna know how to do that. And this was Jesus's response. And I love how he starts out. He says, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they've received their reward. The first thing Jesus tackles when someone says, hey, how do we pray? What is prayer all about? The first thing he says is prayer is not about being seen by other people. It's not about impressing other people. It's not about looking good or saying the most eloquent words. It's actually totally different than that. And Jesus is wanting to paint a picture here of intimacy because he goes on to say, but when you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who's in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. You see, what Jesus is saying is prayer is not about connection to others. Prayer is actually about connection to the father. 
And that's how Jesus saw it. Often when Jesus would pray, he would go off and climb a mountain by himself and the disciples would be wondering where he was. Where are you, Jesus? Oh, he's up on the mountain again, he's praying. And he didn't take anyone with him. Prayer was actually an intimate experience between Jesus and his Father. It was a very precious thing. And it wasn't about looking good, it wasn't about looking famous or looking perfect. It was actually about looking like looking at God and being close to him. And the beautiful thing is, the passage says, your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when I think of like, what is the reward of prayer? Well, when you go and you spend time one-on-one -on -one with the father, the greatest reward you receive is intimacy. It's closeness with him. And that's what Jesus is going after in prayer. It's actually an intimacy with the Father. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. You see, Jesus also didn't think that prayer was a space that we go to to beg for the things that we need, or even for that to be the primary purpose of prayer. Jesus actually was saying, look, in prayer, dad, father knows you so intimately that he's so aware of your needs. It's not about you trying to get him to help you or fix you or make your life better in any way. It's actually just about being close to him. So pray then like this, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I absolutely love this first sentence of the Lord's Prayer. It makes me so happy because of what the Old Testament was like for these people, what their previous experience of God was like. You see, the word Father here is a very special word. It's, it's translated to Abba, and it would be like a little kid saying to their father after they scraped their knee, saying, Daddy. It's, it's not a, oh, he's the all father and the mighty one. It's a very intimate term. In the Old Testament, in the entirety of the Old Testament, that descriptor of God, Abba, was only used twice, both times by David, who was a man who was known for being a man after God's own heart, but even he only used it twice. Jesus exclusively refers to God as Abba. He never uses the formal title. He always says, Abba. So right here, he's saying, Abba. So God who is intimate and close and holds me and cares for me and is not informal, but is very not formal and very close to me. That father is who you're talking to when you're in prayer. So you've not come to impress anyone. You've not come to make yourself look good. You've come quietly to a secret place where you are there with Abba. And the next two words can be a little bit confusing because it says our Father in heaven and automatically we think heaven, oh, that must be super far away in the clouds where we go when we die. But the word heaven here is simply referring to the spiritual realm. And we know that we have spirits that are alive and the spiritual realm isn't actually a place. So what, what we're looking at here is Abba, who is close to my spirit, who's close to my very soul. And in a way, it's Daddy, who's, who's closer than the air that I breathe. Abba, who's right here, close to me. And because of his closeness, because of that beautiful connection that is shared with God the Father, the first reaction is, hallowed be your name. It's a, it's a overwhelming awe, a sense of, whoa, Abba is so close to me. He loves me so much. He's so near to me. He's so good. And it builds a reverence, a sense of awe. It makes me think of one of my favorite films growing up was The Incredibles. I'm sure that all of you are super into that sort of a film. And there's this beautiful scene where the main character, Mr. Incredible, he's got super strength and he's, he can't be beaten by anything. He's like the ultimate superhero. He's having a really bad day and he's super frustrated. And he picks up his car as if he's gonna throw it across the street. 
But on the other side of the car, he didn't see that there was a little kid on a tricycle blowing a bubble of chewing gum. And he picks up the car and the kid looks him dead in the eyes and the bubble pops all over his face and he's just stunned, has absolutely no idea what just happened. So Mr. Incredible sheepishly puts the car back down and the next day he goes back out to go to work and the kid's just sitting there in the driveway on the tricycle, just staring at him. And he says, what do you want? What are you looking at? What are you waiting for? And the kid says, I don't know, something amazing, I guess. And I think that that is exactly what we have when we're close to Father. We see something amazing and we're just expecting something powerful, something hallowed, something sacred, something beautiful out of who he is. And because of that, we want his kingdom to come. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you're so loving and kind, which is what I'm experiencing right here in the secret place to you, I realize that I want everyone to experience this because the kingdom of God is a place where everyone has access to closeness with Abba, that there's no one that he wants to reject. There's absolutely no sin, no brokenness, no ideology that is too far that Abba won't come and sit with you if you're willing to sit with him. You see, Abba loves us all and he wants to be close to us. And in this place, we see that there are so many people who've never met him. There's so many people who haven't seen him. There's so many people who haven't experienced what it's like to be close to the Father. And so we look around us as we're being held and we see brokenness, we see emptiness, we see pain in the world. And this is exactly what Jesus saw because he was desperate for the kingdom to come. He was moved with compassion incessantly and would heal people and, and constantly wanted people to know the heart of God was good towards them. And in this place, there's sometimes a clash of wills because sometimes I don't really want all the good things that God wants for someone else because maybe they've offended me, maybe they've hurt me. But in this place where we're safe and we're close to Abba, we can just let it all go. And we can say, you know what, honestly, I just want that closeness, that connection that I feel with you. I want that to be made manifest all across the earth. I want it to be on earth as it is in heaven. In this moment where my spirit is close to yours, that's exactly what I want for everyone else on this planet. The next little bit of prayer is, is of this prayer is often where I think we spend most of our time and where Jesus actually spends the least amount of time. He says, give us this day our daily bread. It's a very simple, simple sentence. It's give me enough to live, provide for me. And we, we look at that and we see all of that Jesus has talked about and teaching about prayer. We see not being about how you're seen by other people. We're seeing it's a close, intimate connection with God. It's about the awe and splendor of who God is. It's about building a beautiful place where anyone can come and feel connected to Jesus, regardless of their background or past or their pain. And only one sentence is about our needs and what we actually physically need to survive. That's not to dismiss the needs that we have, which are many, and we all have pain and suffering and healing that we need to experience, which is part of this as well. But in this space, there's because we're so close to God and because that intimacy with him is so deep and sweet, all we, all we really need to say is, oh, you know that I have needs. You know that I'm, that I'm hungry today, and I just know you're going to meet that. So thank you for doing that. And I just trust you to give me today what I need, whether that's my spiritual ability or physical, I just trust you to meet my needs. The next bit is so beautiful, and interesting. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. So far, it's been about just me and God and, and just how we connect. But we all know that if there's pain or bitterness in our lives towards other people or there's broken relationships, it can make that intimate place a difficult place to be. And the whole point is we want that to be a place where we can run to with peace and rest and not to be a place of strife. And so in that place, we, we realize, oh, God, you're so amazing and you provide all my needs. And your plan to bring about a beautiful world where people are at peace and people are kind and people are loving and people have courage to do the right thing 
and to be gracious with one another. I'm not that. <laughs> I don't possess all of those things. So I know that I'm indebted to you for all of your goodness to me that I don't deserve. So forgive me. Forgive me for not being everything that I could be. Forgive me for hurting you. Forgive me for not quickly coming to this secret place. Forgive me for praying on the street corners and trying to look good at what I do, trying to perform and trying to be something that I'm not. And out of that place, when we ask him for forgiveness, we start to look and we see, oh, the reality is I'm holding a grudge here too. And I'm, I'm kind of angry at that person for that thing that they did, or I have brokenness in my life as well. And so we turn from that secret place to look at the relationships in our lives. And we decide that we want to mirror God. We want to mirror Abba. And to other people, we want to be a place of forgiveness, a place of safety, a place where they can be at rest. And we forgive them. And we say, I don't hold anything against you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I find this to be so interesting because often I think I can have a fatalistic view of God and everything that happens in my life, you know, we tend to think, oh, well, and everything happens for a reason. And, and I think that there is purpose in everything that goes on. And in this place, we, we see that there are challenges that we're going to come up against in our lives. There are obviously traumas or pains or fears or just not great situations that we're going to come into in our lives. And in that place that lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's not so much about God, don't let me be tempted, don't let me be challenged. But it's in that moment when I've been into been in temptation, when I've been in that place, don't, don't let me be led to that. Let me be led to salvation, to deliverance. Be my deliverance from all that I am tempted to fall short in. And there's no expectation here for perfection, but there is an expectation that God is actually going to lead us into deliverance. And often I think we can have this expectation of ourselves to, to perform and to be a perfect person or at least have a valid reason for why we're not. And in that place, Jesus is simply saying, look, we've all fallen short. No one is perfect. And we have to trust Abba to take us to a place that's safe and good, where we're not operating in our own strength, but we're trusting in him to deliver us. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is one of those really tricky verses in the Bible that I just... I just love reading because my initial reaction to the verse is, wow, that's really intense. So if I don't forgive, I won't be forgiven. But I wanna challenge our perspective on this a little bit. When we have bitterness and anger and resentment towards people, our ability to be intimate with them is severely damaged. And because we know how good God is, and because we know how awesome He is, and because we know the beautiful plan that He has to bring about restoration so that everyone is in good relationship, when we are hold holding unforgiveness or bitterness in our hearts towards other people, we don't quickly run to the secret place. When you're angry, when you're frustrated and bitter, and you're, you don't want to forgive someone, you know that when Abba holds you close, you're going to be reminded of how much he's forgiven you for and how much grace he's poured out on you. So running to that secret place where it's just you and dad is going to be something that you're hesitant to do when you hold on forgiveness in your heart. And forgiveness to be received has to be, you have to set, set yourself up for it. You have to say, I'm aware of this thing that I've done and I don't want that to be me anymore. I want to change that. And so in this place, obviously, if we ask God for forgiveness, if we go to that secret place with humility, he's always going to forgive us. But in that space, we have to be willing to forgive to get there and to really be there. 
Because what this is talking about is pride. It's saying, I deserve more because I did better. And in that place, we know that God does not, he's not a fan of pride because we've all fallen so short of what's perfect and what's the best. And he says, you know, I don't, I'm not going to, to sanction that. I'll still be here for you. And once you forgive, this place will feel safe to you again. But when you're not forgiving and when you're not kind, that secret place is going to always feel uncomfortable to you. And so I think that's why this verse is here, because it's a reminder that the greatest blockage for that secret place with Abba to be in a safe place is our own bitterness and our own anger and our own resentment. So we can often resent God for the pain in our lives. We can also often resent him for the relationships that aren't going the way that we want them to. So this is an invitation from Jesus to lay all that down when we go to that secret place with dad. So to recap, to bring it all in, what is prayer? Well, prayer is absolutely not about other people. Prayer is 100% about you and your communi communication and connection with the Father. It's about intimacy. It's about being close to Him. It's not about trying to get all of your needs met, but it's about resting in the fact that God always meets your needs and He loves you. And it's about knowing that Abba is close, close like the wind in your hair and the sun on your skin. He's right there with you. And that's magnificent and beautiful. It's, it's about being in awe of who he is. And it's about being in a place where we align our desires with his, where we want his kingdom to come, where we don't want to just keep all the goodness that we experience to ourselves. We want other people to know it as well. And we trust we trust that he's going to meet our needs. And we're quick to ask for forgiveness and we're quick to forgive. We don't hold grudges because prayer is about intimacy. And we know that in every trial and everything we come up against in our lives, that there's deliverance and that deliverance is always found going to the secret place. And it's, it's about building humility. It's about being real about who we are, about our struggles, better imperfections, but being comfortable to lay them aside, to set them down, because we do that and then we lay aside the imperfections of others and we forgive and we come to Jesus, we come to the Father, we come to Abba in the secret place with peace and rest and experience his goodness. So Jesus, thank you that prayer draws us close to you. Thank you so much that Prayer is about dwelling. It's about being right next to you, with you, and, and letting that withness, letting that closeness with you change us and make us forgiving, kind, loving people. And it's not about performance because it always starts by just going, closing the door, and being with you. So Jesus, I just pray that your spirit would reveal itself to everyone listening to this and that whatever was spoken here, whatever the thing is, that is for each individual person, that you would highlight that to them now and that they would be close to you, that they would draw near to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jake. I always love hearing from Jake. He always has something that really uh, challenges me or inspires me or encourages me, and I hope it's been the same for you today. Make sure that you share with someone something that stood out to you today so that you can keep that in your heart and mind. And this week, as you go into the week, may you enjoy a beautiful communion with God who loves you. May you hear his Holy Spirit speaking to you as the day goes on. And may everyone who you meet be loved by you as you share the love of Jesus with them in all you think and all you say and all you do. We'll see you next week.